all those old geeks. It's that time again. We now get to spend some quality time together in God's presence as we just learn more about Him. So for those of you that don't know me yet, I'm Chicha Lazelle and I'm so glad you joined us today. And I just know we're going to have a great time together as we just learn more about God and spend some time together in His presence. So before we now get going guys, let's quickly close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us together again so we can just learn more about you and spend time together in your presence. We just pray that you will just be here with us today and let us just become aware of your presence as we sing and dance for you. We just open our hearts today so you can do as you please. In Jesus' name we pray this and we all say, Amen. Awesome, guys. Now, let's get ready to sing a few songs as we just Praise and worship God today. Now remember to give Him your very best as He alone is worthy of all our praise and worship.
guys thank you so much for dancing and singing with me for god that was just so much fun and i'm sure god enjoyed us just praising him but for now let's start with our lesson of today so last week we started with our easter series called the story of easter as remember easter is now around the corner and we need to learn what easter means for us as god's children and we started our series with the story of the last supper and we learned all about communion and we learned that there are actually two parts to communion and the first part is the bread and when we use the bread it represents jesus's body that was not broken for us and the second part is the juice and when we use the juice it represents jesus's blood that now flowed for us and it forgives us of all our sins and it also protects us and provides for us now I know last week we looked at communion and that we need to take it to remember the price Jesus paid on the cross. But we haven't really looked at what Jesus did for us yet. Well, that is because, remember, the last supper took place just before Jesus' death. But he told the disciples to take communion as he knew what was coming right after their meal. So today we will be looking at the price Jesus paid and why it was so precious now to remember. So let's quickly have now a look at our video for today. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Wahoo! 
The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. Wow, guys. This story actually always brings tears to my eyes, just seeing what Jesus went through for all of us. And it's just so amazing knowing that God was willing to pay the ultimate price for us and go through all of that because she just loves us so, so much. So, you guys know how Easter is not just like one day, like Christmas. Easter is now on a Friday and on a Sunday. So, actually, on the Friday of Easter, we celebrate Jesus' death and the price he paid for us. And now on the Sunday, we celebrate his resurrection. Now, I know it sounds crazy saying celebrating Jesus' death, but the price God paid that day with his life has changed everything for us. But let's now quickly unpack the story of Jesus' death so we can see what we can now learn from it today. Now, I think the question we actually need to answer today is, why did Jesus have to die? Now, to answer this question, we need to go all the way back to Genesis. Do you guys still remember the story about the creation with Adam and Eve? And also the story of the sneaky snake. Now, remember how Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis by eating of the forbidden fruit that God told them not to eat of. And because of their disobedience and the choice they made that day, they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. 
Well, guys, on that day, something major happened that impacted not just them, but the whole world. As this decision that Adam and Eve made on that specific day caused everyone born after that to be automatically born into sin. Even you and me, we are all born into sin. Now, the problem with this is that our sins hurt now our relationship with God. And it makes us now to have a gap between us and God that separates us from Him. And guys, we can actually clearly see this in all our stories that we've done so far in the Old Testament. The people just started like sinning more and more and their relationship with God wasn't good. And they kept disobeying God and forgetting about Him. They were basically helpless and they couldn't fix their relationship with God as there was now this gap between them and God. I mean, just look at how the Israelites kept on failing God in our stories. Every time God helped them and guides them on now a better way, they still go their own way and sin and forget about God. So guys, after many years of God trying to help his people, he decided to close that gap that sin now created once and for all by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now, guys, here's the amazing part. Jesus didn't just come for the Israelites. Jesus came to save everyone from their wicked ways. Isn't that just so amazing? Now, you're probably wondering, why did Jesus have to die? Surely there must be another way, right? Well, remember how I said we are all born into sin and we all have sinned. Now, if you don't believe me, check out this Bible verse. It's in Romans 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So now guys, because we all have sinned and we fall short of God's glory, there is another verse that explains why it is necessary for Jesus to die in our place. This verse is now found in Romans 6 verse 23. The payment for sin is death, but God gives us the free gift of life forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you see guys, because we have all sinned, we must pay the price for sin. And the price for sin is death. Now, I'm pretty sure none of us want to pay that price, right? I mean, think about it. All of us have done something wrong somewhere now in our lives. Maybe we've cheated at school or told a little white lie or we've disobeyed God. So, in essence, we need to pay for those sins. But God loved us so much and He doesn't want us to pay that price. So that's why God sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to die in our place so that we wouldn't have to pay that price anymore. And He died in our place to give us now eternal life instead of eternal death. So you see guys, Jesus dying on the cross is now the ultimate act of love. Just think about it. God could have just left us to wander in our sin as after all, it's our sin and we needed to pay the price. But guys, God loved us too much just to let us go. And he wanted to, to now draw us closer to him again. And guys, the crazy thing is that he decided to do it by sending his one and only son to die for us. That's why that is now the biggest act of love that I have ever seen in my life. And every time I think of it, I can't help but feel loved. Because our God, as great and powerful as He is, left it all behind to die in our place, just so we can be close to Him again. Now, I want to share this verse with you guys. And I'm sure you all know this one. But it's just such a beautiful verse that goes so well with our lesson of today. It's now in John 3 verse 16. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. God gave His Son so that whoever believes in Him may not be lost, but have eternal life. Sure guys, such an amazing love. And this brings me to my last point of today. God's greatest gift to us is salvation. Now, I know salvation sounds like a very big word, but it basically just means that we are saved. 
Now, another phrase people like to use for it is now born again. And that is why I say it is God's greatest gift to us. Because He saved us from sin and death once and for all. And the amazing part is that we can become saved or born again by asking Jesus into our lives. And the Bible actually says in Romans 10 verse 9, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So now guys, if you have never given your life to Jesus and you want to be free from sin and have eternal life, today is now the day. Even perhaps if you have done it before and you just want to make sure, that's also okay. Now, I want you guys just to pray this with me. So, I will say a few words, and then you can just repeat it after me out loud, okay? Lord, I realize that I am a sinner. And that I have been running my own life. I know now that I cannot save myself. Thank you that you died for me to save me. Forgive me my sins and selfish life. From this moment on, I invite you to live in my heart. I accept Jesus Christ's death on the cross. And that His blood was shed for me. I choose to make You Lord of my life. And to be the person You would like me to be. Thank You that You have heard my prayer. And that You have given me eternal life now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well done, guys. Now, if it's your first time praying that and you now believe it with all your heart, you are officially saved and born again. So, welcome to the family of God. And if you want to, please leave a comment on the feed and tell us if you prayed this prayer now for the very first time with us. It is always amazing to see new members joining the family of God. Now remember, you can keep growing your relationship with God through reading the Bible and praying and praise and worshiping God. And those are just three ways that you can do it. But if you ever have any questions or you need help on your journey with God, just ask us. We want to help you wherever we can. So guys, remember now, Easter is about Jesus' death and the price he paid for us on the cross. And if it wasn't for him, we would be lost forever. So this Easter, guys, we need to remember why we celebrate this holiday. Now, to remember this amazing lesson and story of Easter, let's look at this short video to see what craft we will be making. guys how amazing is that little book now you guys can also share the story of easter with your friends and family and also help them to get saved if they aren't as yet now i will make sure to attach the salvation prayer with the craft so when you do tell the story of easter to your friends and your family and they too want to give their hearts to god then you can lead them with that prayer but don't forget to share your craft with me as well, because I can't wait to see how your crafts are going to turn out. Now, speaking of crafts, let's have a look at everyone's crafts of last week for the story of the Last Supper.
Well, guys, you all did so, so well. And I just love your crafts. Now, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to do them and also to send them in to me because I really, really appreciate it, guys. But before we get going now, let's quickly jump up so we can sing one more song for Jesus. today's lesson. Thank you for dying for us on the cross and for giving our sins. Thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to go through all that pain so that we can be close to you again. Please help us to show your love to everyone around us, especially as we now get closer to Easter. In Jesus' name we pray this and we all say Amen. Sure guys, I really had a great time with all of you and I just trust that you all now know that you are loved and Jesus loves you so, so, so much that he even died for you. So never forget that. Oh, and guys, don't forget next week's lesson as we're going to look at the last part of our story of Easter. So until then, have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>